Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Jerry. I'm the lawnmower lady and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is on this beast of a rototiller with the really unfortunate brand name. Rotoho, really? Rear mount? This has to be a joke. I think the marketing guru that came up with the brand name for this was either a genius or an idiot savant. Rotoho, pioneers of American power equipment. Got a gear shifter, five speed. I'm hoping the gearbox is gonna work for me. Reverse and neutral. Good old fashioned Briggs and Stratton five horsepower. No doubt it was a stretch, sort of like, I guess what, a long road to hoe, <laughs> to come up with that name. Thanks, I'll be here all week. Don't forget to tip your waitress. So the guy that brought it to me said, uh, hey, I need for you to fix the cord because it you know, doesn't go back in. Um, he unfortunately can only store this equipment outside. I don't even know if he has a cover for it, but um, obviously the return spring is broken. See what the air filter looks like. Ooh, that really doesn't look good. I think there should be a pre-filter on there. And actually, inside the car, but you probably can't see it, it looks pretty clean to me. Not a lot of dirt been going through there. It's unfortunate that everything has been painted. Peek inside the fuel tank. Wow, amazing. Oh boy, that smells terrible. There is some fuel in the bottom of that, but I don't think he, I kind of doubt this thing was running last year, but maybe it was. All right, let's get a peek at the oil. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nasty. The oil level is not so bad, but man, I, <laughs> I doubt this has ever been cleaned or replaced. That's some pretty bad looking motor oil. So before we can do much of anything, I'm going to have to get this shroud off. I've been soaking these three bolts uh, in PB Blaster overnight. There's one there, uh, one under there, and the third one over here. And hopefully these bolts will come out. This is uh, an 11 millimeter. 7 sixteenths is what it's really supposed to be, but most of my stuff is metric. And I'm trying not to... Uh, I really don't want to snap off any of these bolts. Ah, there we go. This stuff gets stored outside and it's pretty easy to snap these bolts off. That's why I'm not using a power tool. So yeah, kind of rusty. Mm, there we go. I'm glad these are coming off as easily as they are. Get this last one out of here. Mm. There we go. So deep in there, try a socket on an extension. There you go. Come on out. Come on. Last one. Split washer is like rusted right to the head of that bolt. Let's see if we can get this guy off of here. Mmm. A uh, little couple of places where it's a little rusty. Always start with the smallest hammer. Ooh, there's a lot of rust. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. It's coming. Wow. <laughs> I don't think this thing was running last year. That's just my guess. The good thing is, is I don't know if you can hear those little balls rolling around there. So I think those are going to be all right. Normally they'd be really crunchy and not doing anything. Looks like, yeah, a lot of rust stuck on the bottom of the flywheel, but we'll get most of that out of there stuck on the magnets. Well, 
this is not good. This is um, basically just sort of crumbling away in my hands. I don't know. I mean, I know we can get a different shroud for this, but if the guy can't get this to store out of the weather, it might be a lost cause. The other problem I'm anticipating is breaking these tabs off. So here we go. Mm. I feel like it's going to break the pulley as well. That's not good either. Maybe that's what the extra tabs are for. I don't know. When you break these, you can replace it with those tabs. All right, so I've got these little, I don't know, duckbill kind of pliers. They might be able to get up under there and give me a little bit of... All right, there we go. This is feeling good. Nice and slow, so as to not break this. Oh, I think it's a miracle I haven't broken one of these yet. All right. Patwang. And this has got to come out right here. A mess. There we go. Work that guy out of there. It's a spring broke in several places. All right. Always check the clearance aisles. Was ten bucks. Got it for four bucks at um, somewhere. I don't remember. And these come with this kind of nice pre-spring sprung thing. Um, little catcher to keep you from going patwang everywhere. So I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to light up this screwdriver until it's cherry red. And I'm going to use that to burn a little hole in the outside of this pulley right here. Do this uh, where it's good and uh, lots of ventilation. It's going to allow me to push this rope in here and be able to turn this counterclockwise. I don't have to undo the knots and any of that mess. So I'm just going to use a little razor knife and clean that up so there's no sharp edges there inside and out. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it. it. Makes it a little easier for me. When you have to go winding this thing counterclockwise. Next, we're going to try to clean up the inside of this mess a little bit. There's some grease there. We'll be replacing some of that. So this might seem a little obtuse, but uh, with this little spring holder thingy on here um, you can pull out the inner coil but you can't get to the outer one and trying to get all that recessed inside of here is going to be difficult the other thing you need to do and this is kind of important is to make sure you get this thing started you know this goes in like this and the spring has a little notch on the end right there that goes in that and then you give it a half turn Okay, but you got to make sure, understand this is the side that's down, and if you put the spring in wrong, you're going to have to do it all over again, because to tighten this, we're going to turn this anti-clockwise, and as you can see, that is going the wrong way. So let's get this guy out of there, and he's going to go like so, and this spring is going to go wrap around in that direction. Now... In order to get the other end out, it's under under tension. I'm going to, because I want to be able to put the other end same type of fashion through there. But because it's recessed, I'm going to wind up with all this fiddly stuff here. Um, I'm going to put a couple of wire ties in here to hold this together. So I can get to both ends easily. All right, let's get that off of there. A little 
duckbill pliers. There we go. So, without losing this whole mess, I'm going to put another wire tie right here. To where I've got both ends, both the outer and the inner. I got hold of those so I can completely remove this little cover thing. I mean this little spring casing thingy. It's going to open up with those wire ties. That's fine. We can take it out of its little coily thing. All right, so now I have both ends of the spring easily available. Spray a little lithium grease inside of there. Not much. So a little bit of lube there. Then again, we know which way our spring goes. Now this inside spring, as you remember, wants to go on this way, so turn that sideways and get that started in there. Then the outer spring, we're going to pull that off right there. You can see that's popped out. And this is where it gets a little dicey, but going to hold that spring right there. And then you're going to put I put this guy through its little hook hole right there. All right, you can see it right there. I'm still holding on with my hand, holding the spring right there. I give it that little turn as I lay. This inside of here. Then I merely just keep sort of run this thing a little anti-clockwise till I know that's going to pop in place. Then once I know we're in good shape there, that the spring's not going to go sprawling out of there, so we're going to cut these cable ties right out of there. There's one. Pull that out. Get the other one where we can see it. I'm going to keep turning clock anti-clockwise until I can get a good spot to get to that cable tie off of there. So no doubt there are better ways to do this, but this just is the easy way for me. All right, you heard a little springy spraying there. Now, we do know that the spring is hooked to right. It's hooked right there, hooked on the inside. I had to go fish this guy out. He popped off and wound up in the hole. So anyway, it springs back. It's both connected on both ends right there. So I've got my rope coming out of my little cheater hole, and I'm going to turn this. I'm going to hold my thumb on here, I'm going to give it about four turns anti-clockwise to tighten up on that spring. That's one. It's two. Keep that, keep it inside of there. Three. I'm going to stop at four and see if that is enough because it's getting mighty tight on me. Pull your rope through. Again, keep a hand on there. All right, so we're going to see how that recoils in. I think, a bunch of dirt falling out of here, but I think that that four turns is going to be good enough. So I can bend down these little tabs right here if I don't break them off. A 
we'll prepare channel locks to or slip joint pliers to get that tab bent back down there on both sides. Recoil is good. So let's get this back on here and see if we have spark. All right, we're gonna make sure this little jewel is in neutral. Yep. It is. The wheels are moving easily. Give it a little squirt of a two-stroke in its little throat. Choke it off and see what happens. Oh, turn the switch on. Well, that's good news, but the starter spring is not quite going back the way I want it to. Bad gas. I'm shocked. Now, I don't know if you heard that screeching sound earlier, but that's the starter clutch here. This should be spinning freely in one direction and not in the other, obviously. But it's kind of sticky in there, and a lot of problems come in where people mistakenly uh, try to lubricate it or grease it. There's like these uh, ball bearings inside of there. Now, you can bang this thing off of here. Uh, you got to hold the flywheel and, you know, get a punch or whatnot. Um, the actual factory tool is really the way to go. They're not that expensive, or at least it wasn't when I bought it. Only problem I had with it is I had to uh, file down all this powder coating on here because my 22 millimeter socket would not fit on there with all the powder coating. I've never seen an aftermarket one, but I'm sure they're out there. And this just unscrews off the crankshaft, and I can feel it's pretty sticky. Don't let that seal fall off, because all the ball bearings will fall out. Yeah, this is mighty sticky, even though it's completely unthreaded. Yeah, you can see all that. That should be shiny. Let's look inside there. Well, surprisingly, there's the ball bearings are still in place, and there doesn't appear to be a lot of dirt in there. Sometimes people put grease or oil in there, and I will clean up that seal area right there. But yeah, it's pretty good, in my opinion. Not sure if you can see this, but there's also a lot of buildup on the side of that bushing, so we'll have to get that out of there as well. Maybe that's a little better way to see it. A little copper... Don't lose that washer right there. Oh, I might as well take it off so I don't lose it. This is a little wire scouring pad. Sometimes these really aggressive Scotch-Brite pads are really good too. Oh yeah, that's getting super shiny. Nice. And for those really bad spots, this is like a 220 grit sandpaper. Yeah. And there's some debris on where that oil seal is. I try to get that cleaned up. That's the only place, well, actually one of two places, that it's okay to put some lubrication in there. I'll put a thin smear of light oil on there. And the other place is on the end. You can put a couple of drops of light machine oil. There's a felt pad in there. Is all the lubrication it needs. 
Well, I cut off a piece of that really aggressive scotch bright pad. And I'm going to i put it in my drill. I'm going to see if this will get this thing cleaned up a little bit for me. Well, might not work so good. Let me get it started on there. Let's see if we can make this work. Wow. <laughs> Clean as a whistle in there. Absolutely no resistance whatsoever. Good old three in one, the old standby. One drop goes right in. Two drops. I think that's all I'm going to put in there. Well, maybe three for good measure. Probably never had any lube in there. Now the inside of this oil seal feels alright, but you can see how nasty that is. And to take in consideration for the wear on this guy and its age, this is non-detergent 30 weight motor oil that I use for general lube pur purposes. You see how little there is. I'm just going to do a light smear just on the inside of that seal just to make sure that's the only place that I'm going to put oil other than the little hole in the end. Now the inside of this cup looks great. No dirt, no oil. I know some people say you can put like dry graphite in here. I have never done that, but I guess if you felt so inclined, you could do that. Just, it needs to be clean and dry. Oops, don't lose any like I just did. And the way this works is centrifugal force. Put one in each hole. As this thing spins around, the balls catch in here and centrifugal force pushes them out as it turns and that's what engages the clutch. Don't forget this guy, that shim, and now the seal. And I'm going to line it up. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's little, these little indentations where those little quarter inch screws have been sort of banging into this guy. So when that little cage goes on. All right, I might have to reset those balls in that seal. I'm going to get a torque wrench and tighten this up to 55 foot-pounds. All right, so I've got this um, chain grip. I'm going to use that to hold the flywheel on. I, I have it. I put a little orange paint on there because this is about the only size I need for any flywheel I've discovered. Honda, Briggs & Stratton, Tecumseh, all of them. Now, some people like to you know, shove a screwdriver in there or something. Um, I'm not fond of that. I'm sure it's not as difficult with this st steel iron flywheel, but it's a lot easier to mess them up when you've got um, like an aluminum flywheel. If you break off those fins, then it gets out of weight and balance and it's just a mess. All right, let's give this a whirl. Hope I don't knock it off because of all the extensions there. There we go. 55 foot-pounds. Get that off without disturbing that seal. I don't want to lose the balls. I didn't lose any balls, and I've got those little indentations lined up. Get this little rock catcher. There we go.
and this spins with absolutely no resistance whatsoever so hopefully that screeching will stop all right a little bit of a two-stroke go juice in there choke that down see what we got going here a little more air maybe That's kind of weird. So after doing everything I knew to do and what I've done in the past, I actually consulted the hive mind of some of the best small engine mechanics out there on Top Conker's Saturday live stream. They gave me some great advice and actually you can see me fixing it in real time right here. Click that link on that video. Starting at about 40 minutes into the video, they gave me some great advice to actually, yes, do use a light amount of lubrication. Fair warning, there's a bit of colorful language in that, and it actually took care of the screeching sound and allowed that recoil spring to go back in. So now it's a matter of ordering the parts, waiting for them to come in, and I'll show you how that goes. This old beast is going to require some carburetor work because it's not actually pulling fuel through the carburetor. It runs a little bit, as you saw, just with priming it. But I'm going to leave that for another video. I want to just keep this video to how to replace the recoil spring and how to service the starter clutch. If, if you like these resurrection videos of some really old equipment, you'll like this video right here. Mo happy.